So barnacles, um, are, to me, the barnacles are the most interesting fossils actually in the collection really. No one ever paid any attention, me included. When I found this complete barnacle here, it's Corgetus lepus durotrigensis. I don't know, look at the stupid name anyway. Um, I put it, I, I, I knew what I found, I found a goose barnacle and I thought, oh great, that's quite nicely preserved. Stuck it in a case, put a number on it, and I found more, so I found disarticulated plates of barnacles from different levels and collected all those, but no one had ever paid any attention to them. And I thought mistakenly that they were the same as the German barnacles you get from an equivalent age, so I never paid any attention. So, I don't know, about four or five years ago, a guy came round who's, who's, who's a professor who sort of specialised in syrupies and stuff like that. So he said, oh, I've not come to see your, all this other material. I really want to come see these barnacles. So I showed him these barnacles and most Academics don't get excited, you know, they're pretty non plus normally. They don't show any excitement like normal people. But he did, he got quite sort of um, excited by this thing and said, Look, this barnacle, this complete barnacle, is the best I've ever seen. He said, Also, it, it, it's actually that particular group of barnacles, that species of barnacles, is still living now off the seas of Japan. And he said, I don't know if you realise, but he said Darwin's passion was barnacles. And he, he did a monograph in two parts on every living barnacle going in the world, throughout the world, and fossil barnacles. And he said, I've looked at your collection, and he said, um, this barnacle, as well as that, he said, this barnacle is ba basically um, a missing link for Darwin. He said, Darwin, in his notes, sort of noted that it must have originated back in the Jurassic. He said he never found that link. He said he made that link. And he said not only that, Darwin's collected two new species of barnacle, fossil barnacles. And since then, no one's ever found any more. He said, and you've got five new species just from the Kim's clay here. He said, which is amazing. So that really, that got me quite excited. Then he looked through some of the other barnacles I got. And he said, do you realise, he said also, one of these barnacles, you've got the world's oldest, oldest coloured barnacle. So he said, this plate has got evidence of colour. And I thought, oh my God, is it? So that was really good. So we produced a sort of paper on that. We also took him out again with a top academic to try and find another site where I found these barnacle plates. And um, he'd never been there. I took him to all the other sites and he found other representative barnacle plates. But he, he wanted to go to this particular site. And of course, this particular site is in what we call a Neapolitan bed, which is just a bed about that thick, sort of closely laminated, and that's where I found the barnacles. So I split up, the, I've got to the site, because normally it's covered up, and we were lucky with it, it was still exposed, so we split some up and split these down, and as I split them, he's avidly looking through there, and said, well, Steve, there's no barnacles in this. And I said, well, I'm sure this is, I know, you know, I know definitely this is where the barnacles come from. He said, I think you're wrong. Just got down to the bottom, split the slab, and there was a, an ammonite about this big, and all around the periphery were thousands of barnacles, which must have been attached to the ammonite in life. And they're all disarticulated now, so there they are there. So there's a remains of the ammonite. He had the rest, and that's gone in the Naturistic Museum. So we made a big mistake with that, you see, because he collected all the stuff and deposited all his material in the Naturistic Museum, which we didn't really want. We want people to come down to Cambridge to look at this. So I vowed in the future, if we found any new or whatever to do with barnacles, I would keep a little bit, I'd be a bit less open about it. So many years passed by, and I'm going down to Kimmage again, and there's a lump of fossilised wood, lignite, black wood about this wide, and associated with it along the edge is some pyrite, or debris, like a film of only about 12 mil thick of pyrite. And I thought, that's interesting, so I just broke a couple of slabs up, I took it back home, turned it upside down, air it, and I thought, oh my God, there's just thousands of complete barnacles. And then I looked along the wood, and there was all this along the periphery of the wood, and I thought, my God, it's covered in thousands of barnacles. So, I, over time, I collected the whole lot, not in big lumps, not all of it, but it's a 2.8 metre log covered with the barnacles. And, and these, you can see how this is raised up, that was the edge of the wood, so there's just thousands of barnacles, all articulated, that's stuck on the wood. And they're the most fantastic, the best preserved Jurassic barnacles in existence. There's two, at least two species on that bit of wood. Interestingly, with oysters, which must have attached themselves to the wood in the water column, because the, the barnacles have overgrown it, so it would float through the water column with these oysters attached as well. And when it came to sort of rest, naturally, you know, 
it was the underside that I prepped it. So the oysters wouldn't attach themselves to the wood anyhow when it's in that muddy subject. So that's a really interesting thing. But we, when we coated these with what we call ammonium chloride, they're the most fantastic things you've ever seen. So when I do a talk on it, I've probably got about eight or ten slides just showing these because they're beautiful. They're fantastic, you know. So of all the, they don't look anything there, to be honest, because they're not well displayed. <clears throat> I can assure you they're the most exciting fossils for me in the collection.